And so the importance for our survival is really to reach out for community. And that means that receiving support, being able to ask for help, not having to do it all on your own because you're meant to. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Burnt Chef Journal, a hospitality specific podcast dedicated to challenging mental health stigma and conversations designed to inspire a new, healthier, happier, and more sustainable hospitality profession. Hello, everybody. My name's Julia, your Burnt Chef Ambassador, and I'm pleased to be guest hosting a mini series for the Burnt Chef Project podcast, openly discussing mental health, a brilliant hospitality sector, and an array of topics to create insightful conversations and give you maximum value. I have a brilliant lineup of guests covering everything from psychotherapy, mindfulness, diet hang-ups all the way to spirituality and did you know four out of five hospitality professionals report having experienced at least one mental health issue during their career the burnt chef project is a globally recognized not-for-profit social enterprise fully committed to making the hospitality profession healthier and more sustainable by focusing on people's well-being first. This is why it has never been more important to be talking about our mental health and well-being. For more information about this amazing project, go to www.theburntchefproject.com. Now, a little bit about me. I'm a transformation coach and obsessed master of self-discovery, guiding women to believe in themselves, find the motivation to take action and create a life they truly believe in and are excited about. I'm also a professional chef with over 20 years in the hospitality sector, an educator, radio personality and writer. So through my own life experiences, including two divorces, domestic abuse, depression and homelessness, I learned firsthand that to make any real change in your life, you have to start from within. If you want to connect with me, go online to therecipeforlife.com. Now, I'm so excited about my podcast topic this week. It is how can a spiritual practice support our mental health? And joining me is my very dear and beautiful friend. I'm going to get this pronunciation right because I'm absolutely rubbish. <laughs> Shokia, I'm going to say Shokia Hummels. Hummels, I must get the surname correct. <laughs> now, Shokia is a shamanic practitioner. She's a model. She's a former hospitality professional. She guides and supports others who are feeling disconnected to reconnect with their inner power. Shokia works with energy healing disciplines such as Reiki, regression therapy and shamanic healing that creates a powerful channel to self-discovery. The Burnt Chef Project is proudly sponsored by Lamb Western, a leading provider of innovative, high-quality potato products created for chefs to help operators thrive both today and tomorrow. Working carefully with sustainably-minded farmers and growers, Lamb Western provides potato solutions for every type of kitchen, from premium British chips and fries to potato shapes, wedges, and mash. To find out more, Head to lambwestern.eu or search your partner in potatoes. Welcome, Shalkia. Thank you so much. And you did so incredible on my pronunciation. Almost there, Julia. Almost there. (laughs) Tell us, enlighten us with your beautiful name. My name is Shalkia Gummels. I am Dutch. My name is a very old North Dutch name. And yes, having traveled the world extensively, I have had all sorts of pronunciations of (laughs) this name. Um, Thank you so much for this wonderful introduction also, Julia. No, it's absolutely, it's absolutely my pleasure. It's just, I'm so blessed to have you here. I'm blessed to call you my friend, to have you in my life. I'm so happy. And we're talking about a topic that's very close to my heart because I love, I love spirituality. And, and you know, I'm going to say for me, 
all my life, I guess I've, I've had an element of spirituality in my life. And culturally, I've had a religion. But spirituality, when I really dug deep and, and really sort of embarked on a, a much deeper journey of spirituality, um, that was probably in the last six years. And I'm so excited because you know, when we talk about spirituality, what does it mean? You know, what does it, do? you know, most people tend to associate it with, say, being religious, right, Sharks? And, and, you know, what does it mean to really have a sense of spirituality? You know, talk us through how is spirituality part of our lives or how can it be? What is so important about it? Yeah, so spirituality, as you said, is a lot of the time very much uh, associated, you know, specifically with religion. For me, spirituality is that connection to more than just ourself, believing that there is, you know, that we are all part of that greater web of life, that we are influenced and can influence this movement through our connection to all of life, through the seen and the unseen that is continuously active and really speaks to us and through us. So spirituality, the quality of being concerned with the human spirit and soul, you know, so really tapping into more than just our human or our physical manifestation here, because we are all spiritual beings in a human body that are continuously connected to all that surrounds us and all that moves through us. And so, you know, spirituality is also that carving out of practices for ourselves that are really enhancing the deepening of our personal connection to ourself. And, you know, within that, I always kind of really love to look at, you know, ourself as being part of a web of life. And when we look at a web and a spider web as such, you mm. know, every yeah. small movement that you make, you see it's like that ripple in the pond. There's a movement that happens, you know, and that is who we are. We get moved by the external influences, but we also move and influence the energy that comes out from ourself into our experiences and into our outer world, you know, how we perceive the world from our own conditioning, our own being to how we are being received by the world. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And, and so I really like that, that whole sort of web and, you know, that, that sort of greater web of life. So, you know, I've always, when I've sort of been doing work on myself on spirituality and spiritual practice, it's definitely what I felt very much was that, uh, and, and you mentioned that, that connection with other people and the actual impact that by having that spirituality yourself and being involved in that, that the impact you can have to other people around you. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, how I really see it is that there is no separation between what you perceive in your outer world or what actually really is going on within yourself. So mm -hmm. although we tend to kind of think that, you know, certain things are happening to us, a lot of the times things are happening for us, for us to gain clarity on actually what's mm -hmm. happening within our inner landscape. So the influence that we have, you know, through our thought forms. Yes. Yeah, so when I look at, for instance, that web that we were talking about, you can kind of look at an identification almost of if you were to be that little in the center of that web, what do you consist of? You consist not only of your human physical form, you consist of an emotional landscape, a mental landscape, and then your spiritual or your insight or inspiration that moves through you. Now, that any of those being out of balance or not aligned will have an effect on how you either perceive the world or what is happening that you might perceive as is happening to you. Yes, yeah, so our inner landscape is very much a reflection of how we perceive the world outside of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so our mental, emotional and physical bodies are almost like an indication of kind of saying, hey, where am I aligned with myself, you know, or where am I out of alignment? And to hold a very almost like a, a way of holding curiosity rather than judgment of, about what you're not doing or whatsoever, but holding curiosity around, you know, where can I align myself more so that I can, you know, Absolutely. Connect to a central channel, really connect to my strengths rather than everything else. 
Absolutely. And I, and I really love that. And I want to really go into that, the alignment and the curiosity, you know, a couple of words I absolutely adore. And, you know, because um, I think the thing with spirituality is a lot of people might see it as as very woo woo. Right. Yeah. You know, that little word, isn't it? That it's, it's all a bit woo woo or it's all a bit out of reach. You can't really grasp it, isn't it? It's yeah. almost like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. For some people, maybe it can just be a little bit out of their sort of mindset. And I wanted to sort of dig deep into that because, you know, definitely you mentioned about being in alignment, about having that curiosity, about being connected. And a lot of that for me, generally, it always, in fact, is connected with self-care. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to talk to you about, you know, how, you know, because thing is also the other thing is when we're out of alignment, when we're not feeling connected with ourselves, when we're disconnected, that affects our mental health, it affects our mental well being, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of the, you know, and, and I always want to be quite careful because I also know that there's conditions and, and you know, uh, chemical imbalances that can create and cause, you know, like mental health issues, so to speak. Absolutely, absolutely. But, um, there's a lot that one can be done and that we are out of alignment with right now, whether it's as individuals, as society, as a collective, that causes us to not feel connected. Yeah. And the alignment of all of these three, so your mental, physical and emotional, will be incredibly important in how you are one perceiving or connecting to the world at large so what you were saying about you know the stresses anxiety overwhelm you know the sacred self-care that we so need is a lot of the times really looking at okay let's say you know as you were mentioning food yeah we ingest so our most important thing one of the most important things is in our body is we are spiritual beings in human body So this is our home. Our physical body is our home. If you do not nourish your plants, if you do not nourish your physical body, what is the natural effect that that is going to have on your psyche, Mm -hmm. on your emotions? Yeah. Having certain things in your body that are not being processed properly, not having physical exercise, not giving yourself the space to be in your body means that anxiety and stress and overwhelm can really sit up in this headspace, which is where our mental, our mind is. So one of the main things is actually just look at our foundations. What do we build our foundations on? And for our physical body, it means how do we nourish and look after that temple of ours? Yeah, how do we look after this body of ours? And those, you know, it seems sometimes like, yeah, but food, but you know, food is the nourishment that is the source of our energy within our physical body. So if that foundation is out, yes. then how yes. is the mental and emotional going to really be able to move through that in a very healthy and nourished way? Absolutely, absolutely. So 100%. That's where we're having to start. So with, yeah. you know, on spiritual levels, we'd say, well, let's look at grounding. Let's look at how your roots are actually moving into the earth. What yeah. is the soil like? So again, what is the soil? What is your, what do you feed and nourish yourself with that can yeah. then create this wonderful foundation so you can grow in a nourished way? Absolutely. It's like watering a plant, isn't it? It's like watering and feeding your grass. And you have to do that with your own body. I know from personal experiences that your body will tell you, right? So obviously, if you eat a certain food, so let's, you know, thinking about that, just in in, in that respect, because that can be quite some, actually some of the most obvious you, you know, if you eat something, your body reacts. So it could be that maybe you get a rash. Obviously, that's that's an intolerance or an allergy. But it also could be that you might have a headache or you feel lethargic. You know, you're yeah. tired. You're not feeling good within yourself. And that affects your mental state as well. So it's your physical, emotional, mental state is all impacted. And it's a message, isn't it? It's a message. It's being a, but the thing is, though, as you said, it's listening and hearing, isn't it? Because yeah. I know a lot of the work you do is very much about tapping in to your inner wisdom, yeah, to your own self, your inner knowledge, your inner knowing and listening. 
It's basically re-engaging in opening up and almost reconnecting. We all know we have all these senses, right? Like we have our all of these amazing senses that, you know, we are gifted with. Yeah. And yet half the time we don't really use them in the capacity that we could use them even to gather information within our energy bodies. Yeah. And so sacred self-care really starts with what is it? that I can do today, so to speak, to nourish myself in a better way? Where can I really listen to the wisdom of my body and take action on, let's say again, we're talking about food right now, deeply hearing what I know within the deepest of my being is actually empowering me or disempowering me that yeah. doesn't mean you can't have that glass of wine it doesn't mean you can't have that piece of cake but if you know that today you you know it is an act of disempowerment because you know that having that much sugar or having a bottle of wine is actually going to make you feel really crappy yeah then you have already engaged in a choice that is not going to be empowering for your body and so it's about creating that balance and creating space to listen. And in this really busy life that we have, a lot of the time we look for the quick fixes. We don't take the time to actually say, you know, I'm taking time to to meditate or I am taking time to have this personal practice for myself, which could mean I'm walking around the park. Yeah, it doesn't always mean meditation. It's carving a time out for yourself, which then becomes sacred self care, where you switch off that phone, where you maybe initially kind of feel a bit uncomfortable and kind of don't know what to do with yourself, but sitting in that space, being rather than doing. And that being could be, I'm going to the gym or I'm going for a swim or I'm gardening, but accessing or actually engaging into an embodied practice as we're talking about like you know the maybe over mental stimuli and the things that are happening so much with people where they're incredibly stressed out where they're experiencing burnout where they're overwhelmed where anxiety is at rife we've got to get back into that connection to our body through movement and that could mean putting a beautiful piece of music on and dancing but carving out a moment for yourself. I'm not asking or not saying it needs to be half an hour because sometimes we overcommit and then we feel crappy that we haven't been able to create that consistency for ourselves. So carve out five minutes. Even Absolutely. if five minutes means Absolutely. I'm going to allow yeah. something to move through you and to be so you can start opening up that space to actually even ask the question, what is it that I need physically today? for myself, yeah. starting with that point and then moving upwards, allowing the energy from the body to then move through the emotion. What is it that I need emotionally today? So from moving them from that emotional space, yeah, to what is it that I need emotionally right now? What is it that I can do to support that? What are my needs? Yeah. Right? Where can I meet those needs? Then into what are my beliefs around that? What are my thoughts around that? And so it's a deeper listening to each of these different parts of your body or of your energy field that actually make up who you are in essence, make up that wonderful, you know, spiritual mm. being and human being mm. in your fullest mm. to who you are. It is about finding that balance, but starting really with the foundation and working through that foundation upwards so that when you are finding more of an alignment, then you might feel that emotionally you're completely aligned and that's great but then look for where do you notice that you're not are your beliefs maybe or limiting beliefs that you hold of yourself yeah. judgments to others projections you know like becoming aware of that or are all of these things feeling more aligned but your grounding isn't great you're all over the place so it, taking that time sacred self-care is also having a consistent practice so that you can see your progress, right? Yeah, and again, does. it doesn't have to be 30 minutes. It can be five minutes in the morning, setting yeah. yourself up, having a gratitude practice, saying, you know, looking at the things that you have rather than bringing your attention or focus to what is not in your life. All those things will 
really affect your energy field. Like you are as an individual, like that pebble in a pond, you know, you are that pebble that creates all these ripples and these ripples will still occur, whether they become tidal waves of, of, you know, like of things that you might not want in your life or actually those beautiful ripples that then start really filtering through. Like Eckhart Tolle says, isn't it, about the lake, you are the lake. So even if there's turbulence and ripples and, and, and stuff going on above, deep down within, you're still this, you can still tap into this calmness, can't you? You can still be this yeah. calm person, that the lake is still calm deep yeah. down within. Yeah. Yeah. And in Buddhism, they also talk about, you know, moving through the 10 life states in one day. So, you know, you may wake up in the morning and have, you know, feel absolutely amazing. And then this tax bill comes in and all of a sudden from one moment you're here and you move there. How can you as as an individual actually stay kind of quite centered through that and still use your own practice rather than moving from one extreme into the other and actually you know not being centered so there is a way that we can really work with our central channel with ourselves to actually feel that we move you know although the world around us might move in a certain way that we can create something that becomes more consistent for ourselves where we mm-hmm. feel more balanced and a lot of that really starts with can i listen can i open up myself to can i create space for myself you know yes yes because so again, it all comes back to that self care doesn't it yeah. the self value and I do love that. I do love that whole sort of because it's, it's something that I talk a lot about when I work with women. It's that self-belief and, and that self-worth and that self-value and, and the self-care. It all kind of, it's all linked. It all goes together. And, you know, you just sort of think, when are you going to allow yourself that time? And I certainly know with the hospitality sector, you know, with the chefs, it's, it's eat, sleep, repeat. Yeah, and so, then it catches up with you, doesn't it? Because yeah, obviously, where yeah, is that space for yourself yeah. to, yeah. to yeah. Uh, you know, Lately. to actually take stock? Really. Yeah, that's right. To um, actually to take stock. To that absolutely. To stop. To yeah. stop, right? Isn't it? To stop and just take that breath and that moment and just step away, you know, and just step away and allow yourself, you know, because this is the thing, isn't it? The thing with self care and stuff is that you have to allow yourself right you know you have to give yourself permission right to actually put yourself into this space yeah because you can't wait for somebody to give you that time or to do that for you you have to give yourself permission right yeah and I think there's always a lot of you know like I I really love that um some of my teachers they really kind of talked about you know holding curiosity because a lot of times we look at our actions with so much judgment and you know the self-talk creeps in and 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 actually holding curiosity is like who who in me you know doesn't allow that space to exist yeah. Why do I think I'm not deserving of that space? You know, yeah. like where where you're just going, going, going. Yeah, that's all good and well. But what if you're crashing? Yeah, who's and it's not because who's going to do something for me, but where can you show up for yourself? And that's the other thing. It's not about anybody else doing anything for you. It is you stepping up and saying, hey, I am needing to take responsibility and take care of myself. Yeah. You know, because that's where it comes down to. You take care of yourself. And then whether you have a family or, you know, like or a partner or, or you know, or you are someone who works within the community, that is going to show up. It's going to show up where you are taking care of you because you're going to come from a place of so much more grounding and balance that, again, that will ripple out. But you've got to take that responsibility. You've got to show up for yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. So now my question, obviously, what I want and I know everybody listening will want to know more about is tell us more about what you do what is this shamanic healing what does it mean just so i'm an energy healer i'm a shamanic practitioner and what that means is that i'm in direct communication with spirit and nature yeah so really working with gathering the the guidance that i am giving or i am given through the connection with my guides. And what that looks like a lot of the times is that I undertake a journey or I undertake an omen walk to, you know, as I already mentioned before, is that we are all connected. So nature shows us very naturally, 
yeah, what is either going on within our internal landscape or what, you know, the guidance that we are being given, looking at the seasons that are changing, what is the season of autumn guiding us to to naturally do? It's to kind of go within, it is to reflect, it is to celebrate the harvest of the year, to celebrate our winnings, our personal development, but also to really reflect on that, like the leaves, which we can let go of. What do we need to preserve? So it is looking to nature and looking to the to seen and unseen forces that we are all connected to for guidance and healing. And I support people in that with if they have personal issues or challenges that are coming up, whether these are patterns, ancestral patterns, illnesses, uh, mental, physically or emotionally or imbalances that they feel that they need. Um, realigning with or where people have experienced power loss. Yeah, the loss of power, not understanding why, for whatever reason it is, that they can't seem to move forward in life. So to support them on that level to create yeah, balance and harmony and insights, really, mm-hmm. so that people yes. can and give them tools, give them the tools to continue to work with that at the same time. Yeah. 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 That's amazing. That's amazing. I mean, I definitely, you know, that word power, isn't it? That loss of power. It happens. And, you know, you mentioned it earlier as well. You know, you could be having a really good day and then suddenly something happens. And and we know that. And I know that very much in the, in the kitchens. You're getting on with your thing. You're doing your thing. And then all of a sudden something maybe goes wrong or, you, you know, something occurs and, and suddenly it can throw your whole balance out of kilter doesn't it It can just throw you off guard and uh, and it's how you respond to that isn't it rather than reacting it's the response you can give to that and I know you know I've done many wonderful things with you and meditations that you really do supply those beautiful tools in which help us to manage our daily lives really if anything else you know and I know yeah, that- but also I think like sometimes it's really important to understand that when we're talking because power is such a big word isn't it it's like yeah. sometimes people really fear that word but it's almost like you know where are we in a place of empowerment within ourselves, where we feel mm-hmm. kind of like strong and well and 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 good within ourselves to mm-hmm. or opposed to where we feel disempowered and that disempowerment can be something that takes place over time and we've all experienced it you know it could have been a comment that a teacher made that made you feel really you know that became you know a a catalyst of your insecurity in life even maybe now or the Mm. loss of a beloved or an accident that happened that physically really affected you or there's so many places where we can experience the loss of power and so the work very much is about calling back your power and reconnecting you to your gifts blessings and strengths that are you know that move through you already but that mm-hmm. sometimes we have forgotten or have lost our way oh, yeah. you know, into kind of really remembering so for me this work is also very much a journey of remembering the truth of who you are in your gorgeous essence and then mm-hmm. working with bringing that forth and that is really calling back all those gifts and blessings and remembering, you know, those gifts and blessings of who you are, but also calling back those places where you have experienced power loss. If you're enjoying this week's episode, consider heading over to our website and supporting our ongoing work in destigmatizing mental illness and creating a healthier, happier and more sustainable industry by purchasing some of our branded merchandise. We have a whole range of t-shirts, hoodies, chef's jackets, well-being journals, plus a whole host more available on Worldwide Dispatch. All funds raised from sales of these items go towards free-to-access e-learning content, as well as providing free support systems and help for those who may be experiencing difficulty with their mental health. Yes, yeah, because I mean, it's interesting, isn't it? Because as a society and growing up even and you're conditioned to 
not do this or don't do that or don't be like that or oh, if you if you speak up or speak too loudly or you know if you want to do something for yourself you know there are lots of words around there aren't there oh you're being a bit selfish or you think about yourself oh you're doing this or it's not nice or don't or be nice or listen to this person or be nice to that boy or that girl and I think we grow up with this mindset don't we of almost in some ways hiding ourselves or in some ways thinking oh we don't want to you know upset the apple cart we don't want to rock the boat but actually just because you want to you know get back in touch with your own inner self and your inner power and your and, and empower yourself doesn't mean that you're a bad person it doesn't mean that you then you know it, but obviously like also I always say to my own clients I always think well you know you're not going to please everyone all of the time do you know what I mean? Like, you know, not everyone's going to be happy with you. And and maybe actually you're wanting to find more self-care for yourself and more time for yourself and allowing yourself more time actually is going to resonate with somebody else because maybe they're not doing that for themselves. And so I always find that it's so important for us to own our space. And if you're not giving voice to the parts of yourself that actually are part of your, when I say your makeup, that which actually really made you go, yes, or that which makes you kind of like makes your heart tick, but you're denying those parts one way or the other, it's going to show up. It's going to show up, you know, in your own even well-being and your own, you know, dissatisfaction with your own life or things like that. And so, you know, what you were bringing there in that regards of the maybe the social social or cultural or whatsoever conditioning, you know, fitting the bill as to even age wise, like, you know, by this time you should have this or that, or, you know, you should have achieved this or, you know, my invitation is always like, if you're unsure about what it is that you want to be doing right now, then start from that place of joy. Start from a place of actually what brings you joy? What makes your heart sing? What are those things that even if you find it hard to dig into, maybe go back to a time where you were a kid and you kind of go, gosh, what made me really happy? You know, what actually, because it is from that childlike play sometimes, and it's not childish, it's childlike, yeah, that we can really come from that kind of, that real inspired place. You know, and say, oh, you know, I really want to kind of like jump around. Well, there's nothing childish about that. You know, that's actually really <laughs> good. And that's that energy. And because that's the thing, you have a bunch of kids around you and the way they connect with all of life, like they're such an inspiration and such a good reminder for us to kind of say they they haven't lost that connection to giving that big tree a hug and having a chat to a flower or actually looking at and marveling at its beauty because that's really and truthfully where and I can't say should where the invitation lies to reconnect to that magic because it really and truthfully is there and so as we are moving through life maybe sometimes with these conditioning on what we should or what we could and we actually are being lived rather than living the Mm. invitation is there also to open up that imagination again and I remember you having worked with your vision boards and goal setting and all these different things to open yourself up to hey even if I don't know how right now What if everything is possible? What is it that I would really want to dream into being into my life? Open yourself up to it because it shifts. It's that ripple in your energy field for possibilities. And so we don't want to close that off. We want to really open it up, even if some of that stuff really seems out there. Mm -hmm. You know, if you've always wanted to travel and you're not traveling right now, then you kind of want to maybe go, gosh, you know, engage in that feeling. What would it feel like if I could? What yes. are the options? How yeah. can I make these things happen? And engaging and, and actively dreaming. And um, because when people used to say to kids, stop daydreaming, oh my gosh, you need to be engaging in daydreaming. Definitely. Because it's through the dreams that, you know, all those people that have created absolute magnificent things, it all started with a dream, not a knowing how, not having no. a plan necessarily in action or active. It started with a dream. It started yeah. with imagining. It started with allowing inspiration in. And again, mm-hmm. if we do not 
create sacred space for ourselves, then the inspiration that drops in, whether you believe in God or in a religion, there's inspiration that comes from somewhere that is yours to receive and for you to move through yourself to bring to this world. If you don't carve out that sacred space for yourself, how can you receive, hear, or even feel that coming in to you yeah. and having the capacity then for it to move through you? That's right. That is the absolute yeah. magic, isn't it? It's that allowing that space, opening up that space, giving that space for it to come in, for the inspiration to come in. And, and yeah, you know, I love my vision in and, you know, I love my yeah, vision. Yeah, absolutely. And I love it's dreaming amazing. and I love dreaming and I love, I love coming. Oh, I love all that. And But it's also it's believing, though, isn't it? It's believing. And you've said that you've mentioned the word belief. And, and it is really having that courage, actually, in some ways, in a lot of ways as well, to believe that it's possible that you can have it, even if you don't know how, but just believing that that Yeah, and sometimes you've got to fake it till you make it. You've got to start somewhere. Even if, you know, if someone has real kind of like, finds it really hard to love themselves, you know, to tell them to say in the mirror, I love you, is going to feel like a lie initially. It's going to not, your body's not going to receive that. But it's looking at those things that you maybe then say, okay, well, what is something I can appreciate about myself? You know, it's starting somewhere. It's creating that space of kind of like, how can I start moving that energy into kind of saying, okay, maybe I can't quite say I love myself because it makes me feel a certain way about myself. Are there parts of myself that I can appreciate starting somewhere? You know, the other thing that you mentioned that I really feel called to just point out is the importance of community. We Mm -hmm. are what I was guided to share not too long ago, which was inspiration that came from sitting out in Cornwall, actually, to connect to the spirit of the land and to connect to trees. And, you know, we all know that trees, they have this wonderful deep wisdom that they connect through their roots to each other. And what I was shown in that is that what is happening to us as people is there's so much separation that is being created. And on our own, we become weak. We don't have the sturdy foundations that we need that are actually very essential for our actual individuals, for our survival as as groups. And so the wisdom that came through and, and because you were mentioning something previously around kind of conditioning and actually the imagery that I get is like we become very closed off we become alone with our own lives we become separate and are not engaging into the union that is possible for ourselves within our community but also the union of not looking at ourselves as separate from nature and so the importance for our survival is really to reach out for community And that means that receiving support, being able to ask for help, not having to do it all on your own because you're meant to. It's a pride thing or I have to kind of it's really and truthfully not how communities or, you know, even generations before were able to survive. So why do we feel the need to have to do it all on our own right now and have to struggle and move through challenges on our own, whereas gaining another person's perspective or support is such a gift to us and it's not vulnerable it's not vulnerability it is strength yes it is absolutely. Strength to be able absolutely. to be vulnerable maybe and come from that place and say you know what I really struggle right now yeah. I could really do with your support and so calling out if someone is struggling with their mental health or with anxiety or overwhelm because you don't have to go at it on your own. Definitely. I would definitely say that, you know, a big, big shout out to the Burnt Chef Project for being absolutely believing in that and having that as one of their absolute foundations for the reason for this social enterprise as well. So I'm going to say that because the hospitality sector, we see a lot of that. We talk about teams and brigades and, and everyone's, you know, working together and you know what it's like in a hot, sweaty kitchen and everyone's doing their thing, you know, for the greater good of the customers. But but you also feel very isolated. And when you do end up not feeling in a good space at that point or feeling overwhelmed or having that anxiety or maybe there's stuff going on at home, maybe there's things happening at work, 
you do feel very much alone because you feel scared and you don't want to speak up and you don't say anything because you think, oh, I'm going to be the loose cog, that one that's going to cause, you know, problems. And so you keep quiet. And the problem with that is that ultimately it bottles up inside you to the point where you end up either burning out, exploding or having a breakdown or whatever, you know, extremes like that or just a suffering internally and it's not good for anybody and it doesn't and so yeah I'm a big believer in community I'm, you know my culture in itself is very much about community and about everybody coming together you know we sit together we eat together we hang together and it is just such a crucial part of life knowing that you have this circle I always say to people look you know think about those key friends those people in your circle even if it's just two people one person you know four people three people whoever it is those people that you know that you can call that will always be there to support you that you support them they support you you know it's really important to know who we're connected to because I absolutely do fully 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 believe in that that connection is the key yeah, to because disconnected we can't thrive no we absolutely thrive. like absolutely. in separation we cannot thrive no. and actually that is the place where dis-ease happens when we create that separation right it's like or where we are becoming so closed off and our world becomes so small it is then that you don't have that either inspiration or support of your community and in order to thrive we the guidance very much is is to be in community that's when we thrive that's when we also can see in others the value that we have rather than, again, our small world that might focus on all the things that aren't working right now. Your yeah. community will tell you your gifts and your blessings, what they appreciate in you, and they might pull you up on the things that where you're slacking, right? But yeah. then there is both. There is that sharing and that receiving of being in a community, and that is what really supports and strengthens the core also. But to come back to that sacred self-care, yeah. it is such a crucial part for the overall well-being the overall being absolutely so shalkia to finish this beautiful experience that we've had together today i know you've got a special little treat for us <laughs> i hope our listeners are all ready for this get yourselves comfortable relax <laughs> shalkia is gonna guide us through tell us tell us Shalkia what you're going to do for us so as Julia I think mentioned also I run guided meditation circles moon circles and I offer one-to-one work and with the guided meditations I really invite people so that's what I'm going to offer I'm going to offer a short guided meditation for you Mm -hmm. to connect with your senses yeah to open up your senses to open up your imagination and your curiosity to really go to a place that we all have available to us where we can be. So creating that space for you to be in your own sacred space and to listen to the wisdom of your body and to release maybe some stuff that is weighing on you. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Right, well, Shokia, how long have we got? Five minutes, 10 minutes? What can you do? 10 minutes. If we've got 10 minutes, then that would be, I'll, I'll, I'll do my best to keep it as quick. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> all good. You know, I love meditations with you. So, yes. <laughs> so, are you happy for me to drum? Do you think that'd be a good? Oh, I think that would be beautiful. Okay. I think everyone would love right. to hear you drum. All right. So first of all, I'm going to invite you all to take a really nice deep breath or gentle breath, whatever breath is available to you. Placing your hand on your heart and connecting to your heartbeat. Whether you feel it or not, use your imagination. Breathing in. Breathing out. To receive inspiration or insights, I invite you to open up all your senses as we are embarking on a journey together. As you breathe in, I invite you to bring to your awareness a place in nature that you absolutely love. Opening 
opening up all your senses as you are in this place to the quality, the vibrance, the temperature that this sacred place holds for you. What does the soil feel like beneath your feet? Are you walking on grass, on sand, pebbles? Feel the earth beneath you as you breathe in. Opening up your deeper hearing and listen to the sounds that nature offers you in this place. Maybe you hear the birds or the waves crashing on the shore. you breathe in and out. Let's greet the spirit of air filling your being. Spirit of air being the first element to greet you when you were born and took your first breath. As you are walking or standing on the soil, Let's greet the earth and thank the earth for all she offers so that we can thrive. The earth also representing our physical manifestation as spiritual beings here on earth. Let's create the spirit of water. Water carried us into this world when we came from our mother's womb. We are over 75% water as is our earth. And then let's create the spirit of fire. The sun that rises without fail every morning, that warms our earth and is our source or our life force. Let's connect to your fire, your inner flame. And set the intention to endeavor to have this fire burn consistently. As you breathe in and out, look at the beauty that surrounds you in this beautiful place in nature where you are. Take in all the nuances, the vibrance through all your senses, engaging in your imagination. Breathing in and out, knowing 
that this is a safe space for you to be. You chose it. It is your sacred place. And as you are seated or laying down, I invite you to imagine that from your feet there are roots shooting down into the earth.
you connect to the stars, the moon, or the sun. Call in that cosmic light and allow yourself to absorb this light into your being. space of stillness, being in your sacred space within yourself and that landscape that is merely a reflection of your beauty. Now take a nice deep breath in here. Know that in this space you deeply belong. And so bring your awareness back to your heart, feeling your heartbeat. Give yourself a squeeze to thank all that is well in your body and all that is at this present moment. And then bring your awareness back into the room, into the here and now. And it is done. Wow. I'll just give you a big round of applause for that one. That was amazing, Shalkia. <laughs> I hope everybody does still carry on to take a moment after listening to this to sit in silence, to be with themselves, to give them themselves that self-care. That was so beautiful, Shalkia. It really was amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Love that thank drum. You. Love you. It was just so beautiful. Now, tell everybody where they can find you. So people can find me on my website, that is www.threatsofhealing.co.uk. They can find me under Threats of Healing also on Instagram. But I think the website really is probably the easiest way to contact, to find out a little bit more on what it is that I do, you know, with the shamanic healing also, but also the moon circle, the courses that I offer are mostly on there and if people have you know questions or whatsoever they can always fill in a contact form and I'm more than happy to be of assistance. Amazing Shalkia again it has been an absolute pleasure and again that's it it's the threads of healing so threadsofhealing.co.uk www.threadsofhealing.co.uk thank you so much for being my absolutely amazing guest and thank you everybody out there thank you to the listeners and again if you did want to know more go to the burnt chef project.com for more information about the burnt chef if any of the things that we talked about today are affecting you 
and you can always find me at therecipeforlife.com. Thank you, everybody. See you again next time.